بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسبح لله ما في السماء Adorations, appreciations are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sent his messenger with guidance and the true religion so that it can prevail over all other so-called religion. Wa shukru lahu ala awlana min wasi'i karami. Gratitude and appreciation are due to him upon his favors and mercy upon us. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahda ula sharikala be a witness in the oneness of Allah, the one and only, without a partner, without an associate. Hada man hada bifadli. With his bounties, he guided the one he guided. Wa adullah man adullah bihikmati. Out of his wisdom, he misled those who are misguided. Wa shadu anna sayyidana wa nabiyyana wa mu'allimana wa maulana muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu. In the same degree, an attestation, a bear witness, that our leader, our master, our tutor, our teacher, our Lord, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, remains a great servant and a great messenger of Allah, Al-Mustafa min jami'i khalqi'i sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa atibaihi ajma'in. The chosen one, the anointed one among all the creatures of his creator, may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon him. May it be extended to his companion and to his followers all together. Amma abad faya ibadallah usikum wa nafsi bi taqwa Allah fi kulli harakati wa sakanati wa fi kulli wattin wa hainin. I admonish you all and my humble self to be conscious of Allah, to fear Allah in all our doings, in all our endeavors, in all our ups and downs at all time. فَتَقُوَ اللَّهَ مَا جَاوَرَتْ قَلْبَ مُرِهِ إِلَّا وَصَلْ No consciousness of Allah will get itself established in a particular heart except that heart is well connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do good. أُحَيِّكُمْ وَأُحَنِّئُكُمْ بِشَهَادَةِ الْجُمَعَ الْأَخِيرَ فِي الْعَامِ الْهِجِرِ أَلْفٌ وَأَرْبَعُمِئَةٌ وَخَمْسُ وَأَرْبَعُونَ I greet each and every one of us and I congratulate each and every one of us for witnessing the last Jumwa in the year 1445. This Jumwa is the last Jumwa of the Islamic calendar of Dhul Hijjah. وسيبدأ العام الهجر الجديد إن شاء الله يوم السبت أو الأحد حسب رؤية الهلال ليلة الجمعة أو ليلة السبت. And by Allah's grace, either tomorrow or day after tomorrow, a new Islamic year, a new Islamic calendar will begin. It's either depending on the sighting of the crescent. If it is sighted this night, then New Year begins tomorrow. If it will be sighted tomorrow evening, New Year begins on Sunday, as simple as that. There's no argument and nothing brings confusion to our calculation. 
It's either kicks off tomorrow as New Year that we greet ourselves Happy New Year tomorrow or day after tomorrow, depending on the sighting of the Christians. And mind you, Nigeria as a whole has what we call a moon sighting committee chaired by Sultan of Sokoto. So, so they are giving official letter to do this job for us. So the announcement of sighting of new moon could be made tomorrow, tonight, possibly by Sultan of Sokoto or tomorrow. Once that announcement is made, that marks the beginning of a new year of Islamic calendar. لذلك يتركز موضوع خطبة اليوم على هجرة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وما فيها من الآداب للمسلمين. Reason why today's topic on this member will deal with the migration of the messenger of Allah, of the apostle of Allah, from Mecca to Medina and the lesson therein. Really, what we want to look at today. In our sermon, Ibadullah al Abrar, we are equated for Islam, for Shari Rabi al Awal, min al Ami Thalith Ashara, min al Bi'itha. On the third year of the, the, the beginning of the messengership of Rasulullah, the day Allah asked Rasulullah, Come for Anbir wa Rabba kafa kabir. The day Allah asked him to start dissemination of his message to his people. Third year during Rabi ul Awal, Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam migrated from Mecca to Medina. Wa hab al bilad ila Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam wa kana ida ul mushrikina li Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam wa ashabi isababa min azwabi hijrat al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam min Mecca ila al Medina. The messenger of Allah, his apostle, did not just wake up and feel he wants to go on a journey. He didn't just feel, I just feel like, no, certain things led to his migration from Mecca to Medina. He receives and his companion series of torture and persecutions from the disbelievers in Mecca. He now felt, let him try another place. Don't forget, he also traveled to Sham and some other neighboring towns before back on a long journey to Medina. He had tried other places, so not just Medina Straits. Even when he traveled to Taif, Taif was one of Taif. Taif is by your right. You see, road to Taif. Even he migrated to that place, seeking peace of mind, seeking a conducive environment to practice his religion, before he made the major one of his migration to Medina about Allah. Rasulullah Sallallahu faced a lot of difficulties, a lot of punishments, torture and persecution with the, along with his Sahaba. He was patient and preached patience to his followers. If I could endure this, you have to. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi endured this pain that even the, strong, the strongest man of any community would not be able to endure. Rasulullah sallallahu endured it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to say in this regard. Mukhatiban Rasulullah speaking to his messenger. He says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in Surah Al Anfal, verse 30. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Let me remind you, wa idhiya mukuru bika ladina kafaru, li yuthbituka, aw yaptuluka. أو يخرجوك ويمكرون ويمكر الله والله خير المكرين. Do you remember 
when the disbelievers, the kuffar in Mecca, were plotting against you to imprison you, to give you on house arrest. How you to look at to slay you, to kill you, to murder you. How you how to send you on unprepared exile. Giving this account to the Holy Prophet, reminding him, Allah was planning. Allah does not plot. He can only plan. As they were plotting, Allah was planning, dismantling their plots. Allah, of course, is the master planner who dismantle plots of other people against themselves. فكل من المشركين أيضا من هذه الآراء رأيا رأه فاتفق رأيه على رأي رأو شريرهم أبو جهل وهو أن يأخذوه من كل قبيلة من قبائل قريش شابا ويعطوا سيفا صارما ويقتله الجميع قتلة رجل واحد ليتفرق دمه في القبائل فيرضى بنو هاشم ثم بديته فلا يقرون على مقاومة سائر قريش in their own places they had to gather to plot when they were plotting they had to agree on how to attack him this is what Allah was referring to at their own shrine they gathered they assembled themselves said they were bringing different views and opinion on the various attack they could launch on the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam and the one that gave the most agreeable one was Abu Jahl his uncle, the senior brother to the father of the messenger of Allah, gave an opinion which happened to be the best to them on that day. That wait, this man, this guy is a special gift to the family of Banu Hashim among the clan of Quraysh. If any of us attack him, Banu Hashim will have their way to revenge his attack on any family that attack the message of Allah. The best thing we could do is let us get a strong young child from each family. A strong dude. An agile dude from each family, each clan. You give us a young chap, give us a young chap. Let's give each of them a very sharp sword. So all of them will attack Rasulullah at once. They will all descend on him at once so that that killing will be like killing of just one person. So by the time we are able to achieve this, Banu Hashim will not be able to attack any particular family because the, the blood of the Holy Prophet Muhammad will have been shared among all the families. That was the opinion given by Abu Jal, his uncle. You have problem with your uncle and you feel you are tired of this life. This is the messenger of Allah who gave an opinion of attack, agreed by all that this is the best way we could attack him and they all agree on this and they carry out their mission. فَتَرَصَّدُوا لِلنَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ فِي لَيْلِ تَشِحِي فَجَاءَهُ الْوَاعِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَخَرَجَ عَلَيْهِ قَدْرًا عَلَى رُؤُوسِهِمِ التُّرَابِ وخرم الله أبصارهم عنه حتى إذا استبطأوه جاءه آتي وقال خيبكم الله قد خرج محمد
they had this plan that the best thing they could do is they would just break into his room all together. The representative of each family will break into his room at once and hit him at once. And as they were planning, Allah said, as they were plotting, Allah was planning. So what Allah did was that Allah asked him to leave. They were already waiting at the entrance of the house of the Apostle of Allah with the representative of each family. And Rasulullah receiving revelation from Allah, get out of Mecca. I cannot allow this riffraff to waste my messenger. Leave Mecca. That was when he asked Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Wajha, if you agree with somebody, you have to pay him your 100% loyalty. There's no 99.9 there's no loyalty, 100%. If you want to be loyal, you have to be loyal completely. There's no partial loyalty. Sayyidina Ali was 100% loyal to the Holy Prophet Muhammad. He had lie on his bed. He got up and said, Ali, lie there and cover yourself with my covenant. It's as if he was asking him to come and die for him. You say, ah, Egba, potato, yo. I think I'll go to the You say, no, 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 senior brother, no, I can't do that. Abba, you want me to die for you? And um, Allah asked him to do something. Those of us that are disputing Nakali, this one Nakali, you say, there's nothing like Nakali, there's nothing like Sir. The secrecies of spiritualities in terms of prayers and supplication to Allah. Allah has taught him what to do. Our ulama said that what Rasulullah did that day, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was coming out, eh, hey, Allahu Akbar, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Ordinarily, movement of the messenger of Allah is not alone. He moves with thousands of angels. His movement is not like our movement. No, wherever you find Rasulullah, if Rasulullah enter into a particular house and says, Salamu Alaikum, you are receiving hundreds of thousands of angels, Salama. You need to know that first. So his movement is different from your own movement. So he was coming out, and Allah taught him, Allah taught him what to do. His sprinkle. But while he was coming, Allah blinded them all in the first place. Cover their eyes not to see his movement. So he, he was passing and they were all blind. That is Allah's support for you. For them to actually discover that they were blinded by a supreme being who actually sent his messenger, he now decided to sprinkle sand on each of them. So he disappeared, I didn't disappear, I passed through you. So he sprinkles sand on each of them. How did Allah blind them? He said, Wa ja'alna min bayni aydin in saddan wa min khalfi in saddan fa aghshayahum fa hum la yubsirun in surah to Yasin. These are the nakali. He said, there's no nakali. When some ulama want to pass a particular place, they don't want you to see them. Or there's robbery in the front. Kidnappers. Ayakilas. And they know what to do, when to do, number to do, where to do it. They this ayah. With their heart completely connected with Allah. It's not just by tongue. But I did it, it didn't work for me. It will not work because you are not connected. You have to be connected with the one you are communicating with. That's what we call prayer. You are praying and your mind is on your handset. Is with your wife, is in your shop. You are not with Allah, but you are communicating with Him with only tongue. 
Praying to Allah with your tongue cannot go anywhere, cannot fly. You have to get connected. I'm trying to explain better. So, then Allah will perform the same wonder he performed the other day with the Holy Prophet, even with you. Is it not the same Allah? Of course it's the same Allah. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said. And somebody now came and said, look at you people. Bunch of, all of you are a bunch of dis disappointment. Khayyaba from Allah. You are all a bunch of disappointment to yourself. Allah has disappointed you. Who sent Rasulullah? Are you still waiting? The great one has gone. He has left. Left? They now rush inside the room of the apostle of Allah, meeting Sayyidina Ali lying on his bed. They removed the doctor. He does a... Nonsense. This is not our target. They didn't harm Ali because Ali was not their target. And the next thing is to go after him. If he just left, he wouldn't have gone far. Wherever he's going, like the normal film you watch, you, 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 go this way, you, this way, you, this way, you, this way, or I go after him. Go in search of him. These are the problems that Rasulullah faced before Islam could get to us here that we are handling anyhow. This is what Rasulullah passed through about Allah. And um, the moment he left that place, the history revealed to us that he went straight to the house of his best friend. Who was his best friend? Abu Bakr Siddiq. Door and said to Abu Bakr, at that point in time, Rasulullah has to use something to cover his face. Yes. Ekal watawaka. He has to use something to cover his face, like what you can call mask. You know, during um, COVID-19, nose mask was used to rob a lot of people. You can't actually place their face when they are using nose mask. So Rasulullah has to cover his face at least to be able to move from one point to another to get to the, to the abode of his best friend. That is Abaka Rasulullah uh, radiallahu ta'ala So on getting there, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knock on the door of Abu Bakr. When Aisha radiallahu anha qalat fabaynama nanu fi بيت أبي بقر في نهر الزهيرة في منتصف النهار إذا برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على باب متقنعا فقال أبو بقر فداء الله أبي وأمي والله ما جاء بي في هذا الساعة إلا أمر فدخل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال أبو بقر أخرج من عنده فقال إنما هم أهل قبي أبي وأمي وأنت وأمي عائشة said you know, Rasulullah know what he was facing. He had excused his family. But Aisha confirmed that at that afternoon time, on that fateful afternoon, we were hiding in the house of Abi Bakr, her father. They were hiding there. Abu Bakr decided to hide them in his own house. And when Rasulullah came, covering his face, he knocked, and Abakar was confused, was surprised that Rasulullah couldn't have come to his place if nothing serious is happening at this point in time. Then when he opened the door, Rasulullah says, can you please excuse everyone with you here? Excuse them. I want to talk to you. <laughs> I swear to Allah. I can give you anything of my life. They are your immediate family. Your family, your real are inside. Summarily, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam told Abi Bakr, you know, that's the more reason why life is so difficult. You need a confidence. 
the greatest confidant of Rasulullah at that point in time was Abi Bakr. You must discuss with so someone, no matter what. So Rasulullah occupied, I mean, Abi Bakr occupied that place, and he discussed with him, I have been asked to leave. I have been asked to leave Mecca. Abi Bakr said, Asuhuba, Asuhuba ya Rasulullah. Companionship. Of course, you can't go alone. You cannot go alone. Wherever you are going, we are going together. If you are going to die, let us die together. If you are going to live, let us live together. That is friendship in Islam. That is friendship. Of course, we want to learn from the migration of Rasulullah from Mecca to Medina. That's part of the lessons. If you are going to be somebody's friend, be his full friend. And a friend in need, in need is a friend indeed. Meaning, a friend in need is a friend indeed. That was what Abu Bakr said to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Abu Bakr offered him one of his two I mean rights. The camels were already tied down. You pick one and they set out on the journey about Allah. Allahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam left with Abu Bakr alayhi salatu wa salam and um, they got to a particular place and spent three nights there. In Dahma Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr wa kana gulaman yani shaban zakiyan wa'iyan fa yantalikhu fi akhir al-layl ila Makkah fa yusbihu ma'af Quraysh فلا يسمى بخبر حول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وصاحبه إلا وعاو حتى يأتي به إليه ما حين يختلط الظلام فجعلت قريش تطلب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من كل وجه وتسعى بكل وسيلة لذريكو النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم When they left they go to a particular place they need to strategize they call it استراتيجية strategy. You need to strategize whatever you are doing. It's very Islamic to be wise, to be a good planner, to get prepared for whatever you want to do. Why spending that three nights at that place that was a boy very sharp and smart, who would go back to Mecca to pass night with Quraysh to get information. He would come back to Rasulullah and feed them. That is what they say about you. They are coming after you, O Messenger of Allah. That is part of war strategies. That is why when people are praising Rasulullah, they call him the greatest warrior with strategies. You can learn from his type of leadership, even at war. That is message of Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. These people who are coming after Rasulullah, sallam, at a point, they got to where they were hiding at a gar, a cave. If Allah is with you, Allah will be with you. If he's not with you, he won't be with you. Allah was completely with the Holy Prophet, Allah was with him, and they came. When they came, searching for both of them, they were standing at the top of the cave. And Abu Bakr said to Rasulullah, they were inside the cave, say, if any one of them look towards his feet, La Absorna, who will be found? If any of them, La Nazora Ahadu Minuhu Ila Kodamehi La Absorna, if any of them look straight toward his feet, we will be discovered. But Allah diverted their attention. And Rasulullah reassured his friend. He said to him, Ma zannuka bithineni allahu thalithuhuma. Sadaqallahu al-azim. Don't be grieved. Relax, my friend. What is your thought of two whom Allah is... What is what's your thought of two persons whom Allah is the third? What's your thought? مَا ظَنُّكَ بِثِنَيْنِ اللَّهُ فَالِثُهُمَا This is ayat al-Qur'aniyya. 
What's your thought about two people who are in a particular place and Allah happens to be to the third person there? That means Allah is with us. This is Wherever they are, Allah will be with them. These people left and is directly sent to him, La Tahazan in Allah Ma'ana. Don't be grief. Of course, Allah is with us. If the greatest mankind, nobody can dispute this as far as Islam is concerned. That Apostle of Allah, Sayyidina wa Nabiina wa Muhammad is the greatest creature of Allah. Can pass through all this. What about you? What persecutions? What torture? What frustration have you received from your family that you are about to denounce your faith? You should expect things like this in your life. It will only strengthen your faith and get you to be well connected with Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Exactly what happened to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We got to Medina and people were trooping out, receiving the messenger of Allah, Sayyidina wa Nabiyina wa Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The prophet of Islam did not just wake up and feel he want to get to know Medina. He want to travel around. He want to enjoy himself. It was out of torture, persecutions, frustrations from his clan's men, from his king's men, headed by his uncle. And he had to leave Medina when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to do so. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has to say in the Holy Quran, Rabbi dikhilni mudkhala sidkin wa akhrijni mukhraja sidkin wa ja'alli min ladunka sultana nasira wa qul ja'al haq wa zahak al-batil inna al-batila kana zahuqa samari li o Allah. Take me out of this place in peace and enter me into my destination in peace. And so Allah did. Wala hawla wala quwwata illa billahi al-aliyya azim. Salatu wa salam ala al-Nabiyya al-Mustafa. All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is sufficient. But the peace and blessing of Allah be upon the Mustafa, the chosen one. Will be extended to the Muhajirin wal Ansar wa man hajar abadahum. May the same peace and blessing of Allah be extended to those who migrated from evil to good deed. Ibad Allah al Abrar, honorable servant of Allah, Hijrat al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Tadumanat al Adida min al Durus wal Ibar, Natasir minha ala Saba. We, we stand to learn a lot of lessons from the migration of the Apostle of Allah from Mecca to Medina. But we will just limit ourselves to about seven or eight generally, just for us to pick one or two things. For the story remains unuseful until we are able to learn from it. That is, the story does not really do anything in us. We must be able to derive certain things. Number one. At Tadhiya. At Tadhiya, for الله عليه وسلم يضطر إلى مغادرة بلد الذي ولده فيه وترعرها وترك أقرباءه وأشيرته وقاله ويغادرها بالنبرة من الحزن والله إنك لخير أرض الله وأحب أرض الله إلى الله ولولا أني you have to sacrifice what is most loving to you to another thing you may not really love. 
It is not everyone that wants to depart his hometown. You will suddenly find yourself in other places outside your hometown. So it Prophet Muhammad. It said, Aharuju Aharajuni Mim Baladin Ahab Ilaya. Fadkibni Robbi Ila Baladin Ahab Ilaik. Rasulullah was leaving Mecca and he turned his back and faced Mecca again. Oh, Mecca, my beloved city, my hometown, my fatherland. I didn't prepare to leave you. It is my people that are forcing me out under the permission of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If not that they are sending me out, I wouldn't have gotten out of you, Mecca. Of course, Mecca was the greatest city to the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Whether Do'if or no Do'if, that is where the Hadith is derived. Hubbul Watan min al Iman. To have love of your town is part of faith. In accordance with what Rasulullah sallallahu did. So he had to sacrifice the city he loved. He had to leave it behind for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You leave it and go to another place. Even though where he finally went also became very loving to him. And that is Medina. So you should learn how to sacrifice. al -tisa. The lesson we learn is expansion. Expansion. If you must expand, you have to leave your locality to another place for expansion. It's very important we learn this. I am very sure 90% of us in this month are not from FCT. We are not. Even your imam is from Kuala State, Ilori Man, front and back. What am I doing in Abuja? Green pasture. And it's very Islamic. You can travel as far as China for halal. If it is only around that remains in your hometown, get out of that place. So Ali Tisa, expansion, is part of those things that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was looking for by migrating from Mecca to Medina. Husnu suhba. Husnu suhba. What we learn here is good friendship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported his apostle by giving him a sincere friend who sincerely has love for Rasulullah and also has 100% loyalty for him. Who is now loyal to who again? It's a problem. We can't find loyalty again. And it's very Islamic. Let me tell you one thing. As good as Islam is, if you agree, if you agree with somebody to perpetrate evil, evil, you agree. Well, go, no problem. I'm going to stand here and watch over you. That's an agreement. What you are doing does not concern Allah, but what concerns Allah is what? Agreements. If you now know that this you are doing is wrong, is un-Islamic, is ungodly, call him and let him or her know, I can no longer stay with you, I am going. But if you leave that place, Allah will punish you because you have disagreed upon what you agree upon. That is Islam. That is true Islam. Some will say, ah, uncle, ah, she, bah, bah, even we have agreement, you have agreement with an, a kafir. If you betray him, Allah will punish you. Don't say, ah, ah, she, abba. Kafiri, kafiri, with agreement, you must fulfill that agreement. Otherwise, Allah will deal with you. If you have business with a non-Muslim, complete it and be faithful, be sincere. If you disagree, Allah will disagree with you. That is Islam ibad Allah. And you are planning. It can't wa husnu tawzeev taqat. 
it's also part of the strategy. Be strategic in whatever you are doing. Perfect your plan. Know your weakness and know your strength. Rasulullah to have a stop immediately after Mecca to strategize. Be strategic in whatever you are doing. Allah plans as well. There's no need to plan for anything. Ah, Allah has everything. Even He, Allah, plan for He is a master planner. It's very important you do this. Number five, um, number five, at Tawakul Allah. In whatever you want to do or embark upon, rely on Allah. Have soul reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In whatever you are doing, it's very important. Al Amalu bin Niyat be determined. That is determination. And have a good intention of whatever you are doing. Be determined. I remember a political scientist says with determination, nothing can dismantle the flag of success. If you are determined, your flag of success that is standing, nothing can dismantle it as long as you are determined. It's important you do this and um, Al-Hijra la tanqut Ba'd al-Rasul Ya'ni al-Hijra min al-Masiyah Wal-Rijis The migration that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did He migrated from Mecca to Medina You migrate From being a liar to being truthful Migrate From being a deviant servant of Allah To an obedient servant of Allah Migrate From committing zina so a Muslim, a, a Muslim who runs away from zina. Learn from Rasulullah, be a better father, be a better husband, be a better wife, be a better brother, be a better uncle. There are five things that is attached to traveling. Five, you stand to gain five things. If you leave your hometown, maybe you know if you go back home on holiday, on break, don't you see your mate? Ah, lady from Abuja, you can match me, just give me 2,000 naira. You, because they refuse to forge ahead, to move ahead. To go and to go in search of greener pasture. It is very Islamic. Whatever Allah has written down for me, I'm okay. I will just stay here. No problem. Allah knows everything. No, that is not Islam. Get up and struggle. The way Rasulullah struggled until Islam got to us here. Tafarruj anil autah tagaruba na fitola biwa safi fafil asfar khamsufa tafarruj juhami. Whatever grief in you. Will be, you have relief of your grief and sadness. If you leave your hometown today, Wallahi, whatever is tying you down are already losing themselves as you are moving out. Watisabi Maisha, you live a better life. Iktisabi Maisha, you get more money. But if you tie your mind towards the witches in your family because of their witchcraft, you will never make it. It has to do with hate. Wa'ilmi, you gain more knowledge. Wa'adabin, you gain more lessons. Wa'sohobatu majidi, you make great friends. This is what we want us to learn from the hijrah of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. It will start either tomorrow or day after tomorrow, depending on the sighting of the Christian. Inna la yamru wa lihsan wa itaizu qurwa yana al-fashu al-muk al-bagi ya'izukum la Allah kuta zakkaroon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned three of his do's and three of his don'ts. Whatever he says yes to, say yes to it. Whatever he says no to, say no to it. Rabbana taqabbal minna yana kanta s-sami al-alim wa tubu alayna ya mulaka tawabu rahim wa filla rahman ayatun gafur rahim سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون والسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين قم إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله